It's rather surprising, and I promise you I don't mean this to be insulting because I definitely place you uh, considerably higher than most of the apologists that I've engaged with. But there's a common theme from the apologists, and that is you're not really an atheist because. Now, in Dr. Peterson's case, it's you're not really an atheist because, in my mind, an atheist is someone who would be a murderer. And so, so that's the place where that debate went to at one point. Now, keep in mind, Jordan Peterson is new to this, and he doesn't necessarily understand how all these arguments break down. But that seems to be the summation of his, of his point. You're not really an atheist because an atheist would be a murderer, wouldn't be a good person. Now, let's just clarify, because this gets distorted when Christians start talking about it. Yes, Matt Dillahunty is really an atheist. <laughs> the drum roll ends. Yes, he's really an atheist. He really doesn't believe in God. That's the honest to God truth. And he may very well be a moral person. I don't actually know him. He seems like a decent guy. So it's very possible for him to be both an atheist, not believe in God, and be a moral person. Why the Christian apologists keep getting this wrong is a subtle distinction that they don't make, but it's a really important difference. God is moral in nature. His morality emanates from his total being. You do not have to believe in him in order for him to be influencing you morally and you unaware of it. Just like the famous gravity. I don't believe in gravity. Okay, jump off the building. <laughs> That's fine. I don't believe in gravity. Ah! Splat. Gravity will affect you jumping off the building whether you believe it or not. God can affect you morally whether you believe in him or not. We don't have to convince the atheists that they actually believe and that's why they're a moral person. Matter of fact, the Bible even underscores this. So I don't understand why most Christian apologists distort this. Now, in Jordan Peterson's case, like I said, he's new to this whole thing. But here, hold on. Romans 2, 14. For when the Gentiles, which have not the law, do by nature the things contained in the law, these having not the law are a law unto themselves. In other words, when a non-believer starts doing things that God has instructed by instinct, by nature, because they're a decent human being, it underscores the fact that the teachings of the Bible are actually come from God and are true. Because when somebody doesn't believe in God, they can still act in accordance with them. Because they are right and correct. Now there is a moral law that is written in the heart of every single solitary human being. You do not have to be a Christian and you do not have to be a believer in order to have access to it. Consider your conscience. Whenever you get into a moral dilemma, there is usually a mysterious third party and you call it a conscience. Now, I believe that that mysterious moral code of the universe, or at least in human affairs, that suffuses through everything is obviously God-breathed and God-ordained, and is obviously God. But you don't have to believe it's God in order to see it and perceive it. You don't believe me? You don't believe me? Do the Examine it for yourself. Think about doing something right now in your mind's eye. Contemplate doing something heinous and truly evil. No, not like, no, evil, true evil. Contemplate it for yourself. Imagine yourself going across the street and killing your neighbor's child. And then imagine the rest of your life from that day forward and you reap the consequences of your evil act. Look suspicious, think it through. You'll see for yourself. It looks suspiciously to me like there is a moral code that suffuses through the entire universe. You reap what you sow, morally speaking, period. Inescapable. Just like the guy jumping off the building. Gravity exists. Whether you believe in it or not, you're going you're gonna to fall. Looks to me suspiciously like there is a moral code suffused through all human behavior. All human cultures. 
and it can be examined and studied whether you believe in God or not. I would say obviously it comes from God. But just the idea you reap what you sow, morally speaking. Try and imagine. Try and imagine yourself doing something truly heinous, not something small, something truly heinous. And imagine your life from that day forward. It would be a complete upending of your entire life. It would look like a whirlwind that hit you, just like the Bible talks about. It would look suspiciously like you are now confronted with the vengeful God. Because your life would be completely and utterly destroyed from that day forward. Even if you didn't get caught, try to contemplate it out. Imagine yourself as Raskolnikov. Imagine yourself going to commit a crime and nobody's going to catch you. You can't even push yourself past a certain point in your imagination. But you can imagine the consequences immediately, just like you can foresee the consequences of jumping off the building. The theory of gravity doesn't need to be actually consciously perceived by you or believed by you in order for you to go splat when you jump off the building. The God's moral law that suffuses through the entire universe doesn't need to be perceived by you as God. Doesn't even need to be believed by you. Just try and imagine violating it. Try and imagine violating it. And you do so at your peril. See, this is what Jordan Peterson was trying to get at. And he wasn't doing it in a roundabout way, but he was doing it in a very roundabout way. But like I said, Jordan Peterson is new at this. Pretty soon he will get good with this argument because it is a very winning argument. Matt Dillahunty obeys the silent commands of a God he does not believe in. He still acts moral and decent. And the only warning from the Bible is you disregard those, those commands, those silent commands at your peril. And every single solitary person knows that's true to one degree or another. Every single solitary person can reason in their heart clearly and concisely that there are moral consequences when you do things that are morally abhorrent. Everybody knows this, just like everybody knows you jump off the building, you go splat. You do something truly heinous and evil and there will be consequences immediately. How do those consequences exist if there is no God? That's the only point I'm trying to make. Really think it through. Because reasoned correctly, it's, a st it's really crystal clear evidence of God. Actually, something that occurred to me long before I became a Christian. I was having a conversation with a girl heading into New York. I was trying to, uh, trying to pick up a girl. We started, yeah, a girl from my hometown. I was on the phone with her and I was going to go meet her in Manhattan. And we got into a long conversation about God. <laughs> yeah. yeah, needless to say, it wasn't a very successful date. No, it's not the most sexy conversation in the world, but that's exactly what we got into. And I don't really know exactly how we got into a conversation about God, but I said this to her. And at the time I said it, it popped out of my mouth and I was like, hey, wait a minute, that actually, that actually is true. We were talking about whether we, in fact, we believed in God or not. And I said, you know, I guess I kind of do. Because I look at something like, like World War II and I reason it like a little child. The bad guys lost. If you know anything about World War II, it wasn't really altogether feasible that the bad guys would wind up losing the war. Go look at the start of the war. Go look at England, Battle of Britain, Miracle of Dunkirk. You'll see quite clearly it looked like the bad guys were going to win and win easily. And yet we all knew that the bad guys would lose, or at least the little child in me knew, knew. Almost every single book, every single movie ever written has a moral outcome that's obvious. The good guy wins. Is that just because we want to believe that there's a moral purpose to life? Is that really it? Are we all just dupes? We just want to believe so badly that there's a happy ending for the good and the just and the righteous? Or is that actually written to the very code of life itself? If you think it through like a child, you'll see it makes complete sense and it's easy to reason and it's easy to see. Yes, Matt Dillahunty is very much an atheist. He, honest to God, doesn't believe in God. But that doesn't mean that God isn't influencing his behavior for him to act morally. And if you don't believe that that influence is real and powerful and true, violate it. That's all I'm trying to say. I dare you. Violate it. Violate it. I dare you. Before you, can eat, before you even wake up the next morning, your life will be in ruins right in front of your face. 
And you'll know for a fact. You'll know for a fact. That wicked deeds get punished. That's the actual universe that we live in. Amen.